morning. This Challenger has a leak. I believe it's a leak in the fuel tank and then I think it has a leak in the rear end. So we are actually taking this tractor back to Ohio Ag today to have some warning work done on it. So we gotta unhook this grain cart. We're just gonna park it in the yard for now. Take this thing up there. Sometime in the next month or two, we got field tile work to do and this is the one that pulls the tile, tile plow. So gotta get this thing up there and get it fixed. Well's good. This machine hasn't been started for a while. One of my least favorite parts about these is trying to get to the oil dipstick. Not impossible. Whoo, this one needs cleaned out too. Oh yeah, definitely still in harvest mode. It's one of them things that's gonna be nice about the shop, being able to pull it in a place where it's heated, clean out the cabs and stuff while it's, you know, just nasty weather out. Right now it's one of them things that kind of gets neglected from time to time. So these tractors have air brakes on them. Let's see if we'll release. Nope. There we go, we released. Hey, our seat's even airing up now. Make sure we don't hit that pallet. So there's actually a little bit of repairs that need to be done to this cart. Basically the auger is not gonna spin once we get under load. I can't remember what exactly the guy said it would cause that, but we gotta pull the auger out. So I'm gonna park this in a place where we can do that if the weather gets nice and a place where we won't need a tractor to move it. So right here, it should be out of the way. And we still have easy access to everything. Now we are also taking a little trip to go look at a semi. About a week ago, I showed dad how to use Facebook Marketplace. It took seven days for him to find a deal. All these cameras would follow me. So we're also putting some air in the tires. This tractor doesn't have any inflation system. The vent that's in that building, it has an auto tire inflation system. Now what makes that handy? When we're in the field, we don't want a lot of air in the tires. Cause that just makes more compaction, less traction. The flatter we can run them, the better. But on the road, it just makes excessive wear. So since we've got to road this thing for 30 miles, we're going to air up the tires. We're also going to pull out our monitor because I don't know how long it's going to sit there on the lot and I don't want it to sit there with this in there to steal. Not saying it would get stolen but why leave it in there? So I'm going to head out now. Dad and BJ, they are going to help Brad get started trucking for the day and then in about an hour they're going to start chasing me because it's about an hour and a half, two hour drive in a tractor so they got plenty of time. We are probably going to be going most of the day, so they get Brad a little bit of cushion in that holding bin so he can keep trucking and not have to wait on the holding bin any. That'd be great. So I'm just going to sit back and enjoy some podcasts for two hours. If you guys haven't, check out our podcast, the Working Works podcast. Had a really good episode with Dad the other day. Uh, it was a little bit lengthy, but man, if you like hearing stories about farming, uh, especially back in the old days, check it out. It's a great one. Finally made it after about a two hour drive. First time been in a tractor in a while though, so that was nice. A little bit less stressful in the field though when you're not passing cars. 
So we came up here to look at this Peterbilt. It is in Lancaster, so we went to Washington Courthouse, which is on the west end of the state. Now we're on the east end of the state. Huh? Lancaster. 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 That's it. Lancaster. Lancaster. We'll agree to disagree. Pony. Look at that Chevelle. Okay. Know what that is? Yeah. Yeah. Well, he's got his historical text. Oh, I hear it. Ooh. Here, hold it out the window. Let's hear it. I mean, kind of, but this is a two-piece sleeper. You can make a day cab out of it. Yeah. So this is a 579 Peterbilt. Fired right up. Oh, look at here. Look at there. Yeah. Is there a refrigerator in this one? Is that a refrigerator? Real excited for a second. Go put a 12 pack of pop in there. You thought the seat wasn't very big. What are you looking for, right, there, right, right there. Right there. I got your steering wheel up too. Yeah. Typical Peterbilt driver sitting on the floor. No, there's air in There ain't now. How's that? <laughs> How's that? Surely to God you ain't going to drive it that way. Why? Did you just push your trailer brake in? Say this one didn't have any codes, the other one did. I mean, it didn't have any codes pop up on it, except when he flipped the hood, the crash mitigation thing popped up. Well, oh, it's, it's right? facing the dirt. So. I can't see anything behind here, guys. So. Okay. Look at the window. Yeah, look out the window. Where's the reverse camera? Oh, my God, it doesn't have one. The other one had 643, and this one has 639. Uh, that was 663, I think. Uh, whatever. Sign the check. Me and BJ drive one each home. Yeah. It could be the last time you see Brian in a truck. Yeah. Probably getting some bed bugs right now. Probably. I'm digging my cross later. Yeah, you want a black light? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Said this thing was used to haul gravel. I don't know why the heck they needed a big studio uh, sleeper for <laughs> hauling gravel, but what kind of devil where's, music where's are you listening to? Where's the screw? Where's the screw? Where's the screw? Where's the screw? The what? The screw. The screw. Yeah. Different. Right here. Oh, no. Yeah, right there. Interaction. There's only one, though. You want me to hit it? No. We won't get lost now. I wonder if it'll tell you where the food's at. Every time you hit the brakes, his head jerks wrong like that. <laughs> here, we're just watching a minute here going fly through the back of the sleeper. How many did you take? 13 bushels. How long was it? FM. Uh, 2.3. Allowed three percent on everything. Hang on, BJ. I feel like a freaking bobblehead. You look like one back there, too. Uh, six. Just feeling the G's, aren't you? Seven. Haven't missed a gear yet, have you? Ain't missed a gear, buddy. I'm good. At this red light, throw it manual, and you'll know exactly how many gears it has. Well, this is the fun part. Here, I'll, I'll catch you. <laughs> Brace. I am. I got my weight <laughs> distributed. Well, you know what happened? Imagine this. Lay down. Some legs yeah. went through that. Yeah. It's scratching. I guess toenails. I don't know. Someone had a live chicken in this thing. So there are two trucks. We're gonna drive the other one also. They're pretty much identical. This one had a little bit less miles. Um, chrome bumper, the other one doesn't have a chrome bumper. That's pretty much the only difference that we've seen. Drivetrain wise, they're the exact same. Truck number two. So this one seems like it's in better shape, but we don't really know yet. That's fancy. This one definitely seems cleaner inside. All right, we should go get the coffee cups. Make right. sure they fit. Yeah. It's pretty. That is a pretty important thing. Oh, nothing. Okay. Yeah, this one's got a dang on beeper, huh? I thought the other one didn't. Yeah, I can hear it. Oh. Hey, there's a TV stand up here. Yeah, I can stand in this sleeper. The sleeper. Is it too tall? 
Nah, I can stand in the Volvo. So what he's referring to is our drive-through at the old grain setup is only 12 foot tall. So Skyrise sleepers are out of the picture. But I don't think this one's too tall. Well, how fast you going? I was 55, I'm down to 50 now. 45. Gee. That is shifting gears. Yeah, yeah it shifts. It grinds Mike, more than you do. Yeah, Mike, I can just drive the freight liner. It might be something much higher, but it might be something bigger. Yeah. Self-fixing truck, that's nice. There's our transmission what grind and the airbags were dumped. Turns out it runs a heck of a lot better now. Yeah. This one get up to 65. Well, I don't want to pass this thing here. So now that we got air in the airbags, this one actually ran pretty good. They both ran pretty good. So neither truck's been detailed yet and uh, the lot claims they just got them in, so they're both a little dirty on the outside. What do you think? I said we'd give them 20 bucks for both of them. Well, we couldn't make up our mind, so I guess we bought them both. <laughs> that was not the plan. That was not the plan. But man, we got a, we got a pretty good price in these trucks. How the hell did that happen? Accidents happen, Brian. <laughs> yeah, you got three of them, right? <laughs> Left to right. Throw me a key. I think that was for that one. Uh, I got the blue Pete 379. Which one do you got? The blue Pete 379. Yeah. 14? I got 32. I got stock number 31. Is that 31? Yeah. Come on, Betsy. So I think we can program. Governor, because this one was not running very fast. So let this be a lesson to everybody. Don't show your father how to use Facebook Marketplace. Yeah. But like I said, I think we did pretty good on these trucks, price-wise. There's a three, seven, nine, five right there, and a decal sticker imprint. So both of these are 2014 Peterbilt 579s. They both have automatic transmissions and MX-13 Packard engines. So that's the same setup as our Kenworth. And we've got along pretty good with it. One really nice thing about the automatic, drivers are always hard to find and um, having an automatic really helps, you know, make that easily accessible, or makes it easier to find a driver. Not super crazy about the MX-13, but the one we have has so far been okay. Put a few parts in it, but uh, we love them as long as they're running. As long as they run, they're fine. We forgot to ask if these ones have had the weight loss plan. So these are the first Peterbilts we've ever owned. I don't know what Dad's mumbling about, but he just sold his house. He's gonna live in there. What? Had them things on? What? The, it's got one of them uh, heaters on it. Eight engines. Yeah. Like right. a thing where <laughs> there's shore power out here. So it's got one of them. Which we never did figure out on that Kenworth. The APUs or whatever. Yeah. Right there's the inverter. Well, I can take this camp, sell camp, or get go camping in it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you can take that cover off up front and dump your poop bucket. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, wait. Oh, the door's off. Tomorrow we're gonna haul Graham with one of them new trucks. Want to make sure that they both run pretty good and um, whatnot, and clean them up. Let's see if we can make them shine. But for now. Dax and I have baseball practice, so I'm heading home, going to baseball. I haven't had to do that in 15 years. Morning. So we are starting the day off putting fires out. I don't mean real fires, I mean like we've got a plug grain bin. Perfect. Everything was going too smooth. That'll be fun. I think Brad likes the new trucks. I think those are gonna look real sharp when we get them cleaned up. But. So let's talk a little bit about how this purchase happened. So this was not super planned. We were kinda halfway looking for a truck. We're usually always looking for 
a decent truck if we can find the right price on one. We have a very strict pricing guideline that we're not going to spend 60 grand on a Peterbilt like 379 or 389 just to look pretty. I would love to have one of those trucks or a big W9 Kenworth. I think they look great, but the fact of the matter is we just bought two of those these trucks for what one of those would have cost and it probably still would have been ragged out with 1.8 million miles. So for what we do, going 10 to 20 miles with grain, sometimes 40 miles, these trucks work fine. We don't need to spend that kind of money. We got these trucks at a really reasonable price, really happy with what we paid for these. I don't think we can go wrong, basically. We had no intentions of buying two. We went there to buy one truck if it was, you know, past the scratch and sniff test. It passed, obviously, but um, we threw out a price if we took both trucks that was, I thought, almost insultingly low. And he took them. Uh, the, the guy took the price. So that's how we ended up with two of them. We do have two trucks that will probably be for sale real soon. Both the Volvos that we have left are probably going to be on the chopping block. So basically we'd be keeping both Peterbilts, the, the Red Kenworth, and the Black Freight Shaker. Really have a hard time letting go of my Freightliner. C15 cat. Oh, oh, oh. Lots of ponies. Those old Volvos, it's, uh, especially the day cab, I think we're going to send it. The other Volvo, the um, one with the sleeper, it's still a good truck, still drives really well. I think it's a 400 horsepower small block Cummins, so it runs pretty good. But uh, it's probably not going to get much use anymore. One of these is going to be hooked to the other white Tempe. One of them is probably going to get hooked to the steel trailer that we use during harvest, and then the rest of the time this will be either used to pull a spray trailer, slash water trailer, or the low boys, my guess. Haven't got that part figured out just quite yet. We got lots of cleaning to do. Like I said, these trucks had never been really detailed yet, just the inside. So Brad's going to be buffing on this thing while we're in Louisville. Get these tanks shined up, get these wheels shined up. These two trucks were local. They were, uh, well, they were about 50 miles from here and they hauled uh, gravel their whole life. So they've got a lot of lime dust, a lot of gravel dust on them. Try to power wash the frames and see what we can shine up on them. They're not perfect. I mean, both of them have around 650,000 miles on them, but I think, uh, I think they're gonna do well. That's usually when we get a truck about that kind of mile range. But like this, this all needs, this all needs shined up. Um, but yeah, it's got good tires on it, good brakes. Uh, the engine and transmission, everything seemed, seemed to shift fine in both of them. There was a few things we were worried about at first and then we realized that there wasn't really anything to worry about at all. So, yeah, I think these are going to be awesome. Good trucks. But if you are interested in either one of the trucks that we will have for sale, feel free to email me. There's a link to my email below. Uh, let me know if you're interested and we will set up a time for you to come take a look at them. We got a day cab Volvo we're going to post for $5,000. It is a 1998, I believe. It's a, I think that was a 10 speed. I'm pretty sure it's a 10 speed with a small Detroit. I think it's got a Detroit. Pretty sure it's got a small Detroit, 300, 330 horse, something like that. I'm not trying to think if there's any other details on the truck. We don't use it a whole lot. The dash is broke. The speedometer doesn't work. The tachometer doesn't work. There is a uh, odometer on one of the wheels. I think that truck has 400,000 miles, I think. And then the other Volvo, the bigger one, we will put 10,000 on that one. It's got 700,000 miles, I believe. It's a 10-speed um, M11 Cummins. Actually, it's got a different ECM in it, so it's up to 400 horsepower. I'm trying to think if there's any other major details on that. I believe it's a 99 also, or 98. So yeah, if you're interested in those, let us know. And uh, yeah, we'll fix you right up. Thanks for watching, folks. Got a couple announcements, though. As far as the merchandise side of the house, we have a sale going on at farmfocus.com. We are discounting some older merchandise. We have switched logos. I don't have my new hat yet because it, it's still in the mail. But we have a new farm hat, new farm logo. So check that out at farmfocus.com. Be sure to get you some merchandise while it's on sale. Link to that is in the description. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next one.